Hi my Woolly Wanderers and welcome to part two of this felt along. Now as you can see I'm just showing you what I've got left from my kit. So we've got these locks here which have actually been carded and these will be used by clouds. I have some green left which have also got different shades in as well as the highlight which we'll be using for our hillside here. We've also got the purple here which will be used for the heather. We've got the rest of the blue left and also some lovely locks I've put in for you to be able to use for the sea as well as some white locks there which will be used for some crashing waves if you like. We've also got a little bit of sky left and we've also got a bit of sky left and we've also got the white top there left for the sand. So first of all I'm going to get started with the clouds. Now obviously clouds come in all different ways. I don't want to have a block like this okay. The best way to do it I have found is to be able to separate the clouds, separate the wool should I say, which are going to be the clouds and temporarily put them in and see what you think. Now obviously you'll be using one needle like this but just so that I can get through the video a bit quicker with you I'm going to be using my multi-tool. I have these for sale as I said before on our website. Right, so I'm just going to have a look to see where I'd like to put the clouds. As I'm sure you agree, they're all very, very different clouds. So we can have all different kind of shapes. But first of all, I like to kind of have a look to see, do I like that? There we are, I've got a bit of a puffy one over here. So what I've done there is I've separated the white I've given you because they're locks which have been carded so they're nice and bushy they can end up nice and bushy like this which I like and some of them might be a bit more like this so I would pull it apart but still right, if I just put that there A nice look there so we've got some nice fluffy bits there as you can see and actually I quite like that in case we've got something coming over the hill there so that will be kind of in the far distance at the back so I'm going to push that in a bit more and then we've got these ones which are directly above I'm happier about. We've got the lock that we've just separated there and I love that because look you can see the crinkle there of the lock itself and I really love that it's still wool and actually we can see that so that when it's on your wall or it's sitting on your sideboard you know that you've created that from wool. Okay and we've got a bit of a smaller shape there. I'm just going to bring that out a little bit. But I like that. If you look on here, um, I've managed to do a downward shot now and set up my camera so that you've got a better downward shot. This is the exact piece that I did the other night. Um, and as you can see, we've got some lovely greens going through it, which are moving down and then we've got that undulation there. I really like all of this work and I really like the greens. So what I'm going to do is just build up the colour a bit more. If we've got a colour within the green, as you can see here, that we're not too sure of, and say there was, because actually those two bits were together. So I just pulled them apart. And the great thing is, as I can keep doing that, and every time I do that, it's just dispersing the other green through the colour. So we end up with something like that. So we've got that green in there, 
the one that we were trying to just move around a bit but we've also got some other greens so once again we're going to straighten out the wool like we've talked about now I am going to get one needle for this and start making some highlights where I think we might see some as the hills coming down now all of this we need to be very careful of our fingers so when I'm working I do keep my fingers away from the work but sometimes I work round my fingers and actually use that as a bit of a shape when I am doing that I'm very aware that I'm keeping away from my fingers I'd like a bit of darker green on the top just to make a bit of an accent really so I'm going to go to the top where I am I'm going to start coming down remember we've gone over the picture so that we're going to cut that down or if you've got a mount then that will cover that so I'm not getting rid of that cloud you can see the cloud still there but I am making a feature of the top of the hill The frame that I'm probably going to get for this is a box frame so that when I put the work in I'm able to make some of it stand up which is what you can do with the wool and the glass won't be flat onto the wall. So you can get all different box frames from different suppliers. And I just find with the wool especially, you're able to just show off your work a bit nicer with the wool. So you'll get two needles in your set. One that's coarse and that's the one that we started off and did all of this lovely work with. And one which is softer, softer, less coarse, I suppose I could call it. And that's the one we're gonna be using for the details. I'm going to carry on down with the hillside. As you can see, we've got a nice light bit there, which will be nice as a highlight. When I was putting these packs together, I actually carded the wall myself. putting about five to seven different greens I think I used in the end to be able to get the colours I wanted. And as you can see that's made a real really nice feature of that coming down. The more that we felt that in the more it would look like I'm just going to remove it from there will look like part of what we've already done okay. If I put in a bit of detail for example I'm going to put in some of a highlight here and I just left that like that as you can see it's not felted in and it's sticking out okay so remember when we talked about the wool actually being part of its backing this is what the back of my project looks like. Everything is coming through, okay? Whereas if I don't felt it properly, it won't go through to the back. So I'm going to felt that in properly. And I think that's what I really like about this is just making little details. I'm just gonna use one of the harder needle so you've got the coarser needle and then we've got the finer needle so remember we can do this with the needle 
but we can't do it too hard because the needle will snap. And nothing is permanent on this, remember, which is what I love. To get some of this undulation and make that a bit more of a feature, I'm going to go into the side there. Can you see? So instead of going straight down with my needle, which is what I have been doing, obviously, straight up and down, I'm actually going to go into the side. So I've actually got my needle horizontally now. I really like this dark that I've just put on, but I would like that to look higher than the wool underneath. So if you think about a hillside, you've got hills within hills, haven't you? So with me going in, and I can go, so from the other side, you're not going to have such a great picture of it. If I just turn it on its side, you might be able to see. That's it. So I'm going in to the side here, all the way up. So it's not going to make it 3D, but it will make it stand out a bit more. So here I wanted to make a bit more of an undulation. I'm going to bring that out, just felt that in. So that goes underneath it. And I want that to come forward a bit. So I found a darker bit of wool within my pack and I've used that to go down to make a nice feature there on my hillside. As I'm doing this I want you to remember that this is your hillside. You may have something completely different in your mind that you would like to do and that is perfect too. I'm going to make another little hillside within the hillside. I'm going to use my fine needle again. Yeah, I just want you to know that whatever you decide to do is completely fine and okay. <laughs> I don't want you to think, oh, she didn't talk about that. Please, that's not what any of this is about. Okay, none of this is about you doing exactly what I'm doing. Now, but the reason why I've made these videos is because I'm saying if you're unsure then maybe you could have a look at mine and do something like I've done because I want this kit to be accessible for everybody because I don't want people to say oh I can't do it because I'm not arty well I want you to do it then if you're not because I want you to learn something because actually what I've really loved doing all of this process is like setting up my YouTube channel setting up my website and doing all of those things is all the time I am learning. I think it just it's made me feel good about myself which sometimes I think is a really good thing to be able to do. Okay so as you can see I've made that highlight down there that was just one tuft of wool and I think this is you know this is really important for you to remember we're not going to shove all of that on there like that okay we're going to peel a bit off so I'm doing it really gently now you can see that's a different color so we have got sort of that color there but I've made a highlight there so I'm going to go in under the highlight with this darker bit of wool and so I've gone right up to that there just put a bit more light on the subject which hopefully will make it a bit easier for you to see. And then I've come down with that, and that's fine. I'm going to leave that finishing there. But all of it needs to have a start and an end. So if we can get it so that we pull it out, so we've got the wool, we pull it apart, and when we've pulled it apart, we've got this end and we've got this end. If I want that to be a bit finer I can pull it again and there we are. We've got, we've actually got something which has got two ends which are kind of pointed. 
Right, let's come down to the sea. I'm making some bushes. So I'm, you know I said when we were doing the landscape bit, don't bend the wool over, but sometimes we do. This is one of those occasions. So I'm actually actively pushing over the wool. Because as I said, because I'm gonna put this one in a 3D frame, I can make it actually stick up a bit, okay? Now, be very careful with your fingers. I've been doing this for a lot of years and I still prick my fingers, don't get me wrong, but I am very also very aware <laughs> of where to put them. Right. So I'm gonna choose a lighter bit now and do another bush over here. Oh yeah, so in your wool you may have some of this. And that's, we call it VM, vegetable matter, because obviously these are from real sheep, this wool is. And you may have just a little bit of, it's only a bit of, um, that's a bit of hay or something. So just make sure you take that out. Oh, I'm gonna take that as well, because look. So I've chosen, out of this, I've chosen two highlighted bits and I'm going to make another bush I'm going to bring it up to the other one once again I'm going to curl it over I'm going to use the finer needle just to push it in I find this a really great way of adding depth to shapes that I'm going to put on my pieces I don't do any 3d work Personally, I don't know how they do it. I just think they make an amazing job of those 3D pieces. Um, someone that I really love um, watching, Philippa Feltz. Um, I'll put her YouTube channel in the description. But oh, I love watching her. She just does some amazing, amazing pieces. And uh, has been really helpful to me. Although she doesn't realise it. Um, making videos and just thinking... I can do it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, amazing 3D artist. So there, once again, I'm pulling it off. So as you can see, I've re to the camera. That is stood proud of this other stuff, which is flatter. Now, because I've started that bush, I'd like to carry on a bit. Now, this is the highlight bit I've put within your packs. So I am going to put a little bit, so you know the dark bit we've put, I'm just going to put a bit under there, quite a bit on the top, I just want to go in underneath that darker colour, only a little bit. And then we will just snip it off. It's only a little bit. This is what I'm on about with these details. It just really does help to make it look like a proper. Um, as we talked about, I use these scissors, which I find very, very helpful because they've got that on the end. They go up like that. I'm just going to, so anything that you do cut, if we bring it out like that, so we don't want to kind of it straight across. And then I'll just put that end in. There you are. Just that little bit of detail there. Okay, with my multi-tool, just to help. Oh, see? Into my nail. Yeah, so I'm going towards myself there. Got to be so careful. Okay, this is a nice bit. It's a nice carded bit of wool. So remember we talked about carded, all the fibres are going in different directions as you can see there. All different directions, but when you've got a top like this, all the wool, and that's the staple of the wool, look how long that is, but that is all going in one direction and that's what you call a top. So when I spin wool, I usually use um, tops. I will be doing some spinning videos to add to the collection. I love spinning. I was a 
musician in the War Marines Band. In His Majesty's War Marines Band now. And, um, yeah, so I just love the metronomic feel of, of uh, spinning wool. I really do. Um, I remember we went to one of those country fairs. It was at um, Queen Elizabeth Country Park. And um, I said to my mum, oh, I just need to go and speak to those ladies because I just love what they're doing there with that spinning wheel. Anyway, the next thing I knew, the next week I was going to a group. And then I bought a wheel and now I've got three of them. <laughs> Much to my husband's dismay. But um, I, keep, I keep saying to him, the reason why I've got three is that I can teach someone. So one day I'll have someone to teach and I will need a will to do it. So I'm sure everybody that crafts is having a laugh because we all know we have lots and lots of stuff within our stashes. Lots of um, UFOs, unfinished objects. But they're just ready and waiting for us for another time, aren't they? That's the way to always look at it. Okay, as you can see, I'm kind of making some different shapes along here. So I've gone kind of in and out and back in again. Just to make a bit of detail. And then I'm just going to make sure that's properly felted in. So that's not going to come off. Okay, within your packs as well, you've got some purpley colour. I'm going to go in. Once again, I'm using my finger as a kind of shape to go round to be able to put this. Now, what I would like to do with this heather is to come down and actually come to a point. Okay, so I'm going to hold and hold, I'm holding it quite tight, but then I'm pulling it. Can you see? So I'm going to felt this bigger bit in here I want the highlight at the top that I've put in earlier so hopefully you can see that but I wanted that to come to a point there before the darker bit there you are come to a point can you see so that's come next to the darker green and the highlight and there with the highlight on the top imagine the sun's coming down that way okay so we've put in some highlights on the top and we will do some on the top here actually there we are there's a bit of heather I'm going to put some around the bottom as well because we've made this bush here and I would like some heather in between now what we've got to realize with this is less is more okay so I don't want to put a great big clump in that because that will make that quite dark I just want I just want an accent of this purple here so I'm going into the side because obviously we've made it slightly 3d so I've gone into the side so you can't necessarily see it from above I've done it there so I think what I might do is put in slightly a bit more not much so. I mean, look, you can't actually see it. I'm going in from the side again. Remember we spoke about that? What I'm doing with this one, pushing it back a bit, pushing it in and back so that you can see it a bit more from the top. So you've got some which is underneath and then I've pushed this one in from the side so it's gone on top of the hill. Not hill, but bushes that I've done. And once again, we've come to an end. So I'm just going to bring that into the end. So that means on the ground level, you can see as you, if you were walking past, you would be able to see some heather. Keeping our fingers well away. Going into the side. Going into that side. And this is with our fine one as well. If I did it with our coarser one, it builds up really fast. So 
if we do it with the finer one, we've got more control. Because actually it starts changing shape. You're like, whoa, whoa, stop, stop, stop. Yeah, so using the finer one for these finer details is better. Okay, so I'm going to want this to come to a bit of a point here. So I, I'm grabbing it with my thumb and forefinger and then I'm pushing it in very, very gently because I'm right next to my fingers here and making that down into a point to make that bush end satisfactorily. Yeah, so that's, as you can see, I've got some of the white in there. So I'm gonna cut that away. And with my multi-tool, I'm just gonna push that down a bit, the white. Because when we blocked in the colors, we hadn't fully felted everything because I've just left this until I've come back to it again. So some of these colors are not mixing in, that would be the wrong word, but they're just laying on the top. So we need to just separate them. We do want those kind of distinct, the blue, the green, the green into the white, the white. So I will be doing some more felting into all these all these different colours. Okay, so we've got this really nice kind of little mound here going on. We've got some heather coming down. I said we were going to put a highlight at the top because what we're saying is the sun is coming in from this direction. So it will be hitting, for example, somewhere like this where we've gone had a bit of an in and outy. Really go all the way down the hill. So I'm gonna use my scissors and kind of, so I'm pulling the wool and cutting the wool at the same time. What we don't want is straight lines. Yeah, so I've caught that there. So let's put another highlight in. So I'm just pulling that out once again very thin. I'm going to get this up here. So what's great about because we've made it a bit darker just means the highlight will be more accented. So once again I'm pulling the wool away and bringing my snips or scissors down and I'm just cutting it like that across. Okay all very gently because the sun's coming this way wouldn't be right if they weren't highlighted. So I'm pulling, cutting away. See look that hasn't left me with a straight edge like that. So look I've got this lovely bit of green there and I don't want to get rid of that at all. So we can just have them sitting next to each other. You can manipulate the shape you know because that was kind of like that which is a straight line but I'm just thinking actually I just want that more to have that kind of bend in it so I'm still using the end of that wool that we pulled out I'm going to go over the top of the heather here so it's all very fine I have to say but it really will stand out when you look at it from a distance which is one of the best way to look at your pieces of art when you finish them. Okay, so the other way you can do it is I just lick my fingers and then I'm, can you see I'm twisting the wool? So what I'm getting there is actually a bit of a firmer line. So when I come to this heather, for example, instead of that being a wispy line, I'm making it more pronounced. So I'm pleased with that, how that's coming along. So we've got some nice greens in there. We've got some nice heather colors in there, just very subtle down here, very subtle, but it is there nevertheless. 
Um, we've got some undulation. I think I might just work on this bit now because that just looks a bit... We've worked on everything down here, but this bit, as you can see, we haven't worked on at all. And it looks completely different than this bit now, doesn't it? So it really sticks out. I think I'm going to go... Because actually, looking at what I've done already and the wool I've already used, you can see that actually we've got a nice bit there that I'd like to kind of bring out. So the way I can bring that out is by going directly underneath it with something darker, zoomed in down. Okay, I'm just going to use this tool. So there we've got that bit. So I'm going to get another lighter bit which is a different colour than both of those colours and I'm going to come in right here okay right there like that so I've gone in with a different colour again just making a bit of a shape can you see very lightly coming down and coming just in and then off the edge like that can you see that so that's just come round and down and then off the edge I'm quite happy with that being like that and then I'm going to go in from the side because obviously we've put this wall in here so we can build that up slightly by going into the side that's from so I'm just going to snip that off got that bit there I'm just going to use my multi-tool to just bring that up a bit so instead of using the multi-tool you can use your coarser needle remember I was saying it we can change shape of things which that is doing but on that occasion I don't quite mind that that's fine And then I'm going to bring that off down to there. Can you see, just going down round to there. That's very, because I've been using the fine needle, do you realise how much work you've got to put in with the other needles? Right, so I'm going in to the side, pushing this in here, that bit, that last bit of yellowy kind of green, into there. So hopefully you can see, just a minute ago that was quite plain, wasn't it? We've just brought a bit of colour into, into the back there. We've pushed in some yellowy green here, just to highlight that. And we've just then brought that round there, like that. And that was using the coarser needle just by pushing that in there to bring that to a point. I'm now going to go in with the fine needle, just that make that look a bit more cohesive okay because we don't want there to be distinct differences so we've brought that down to an edge there along with this bit of wool that we put in there okay I'm really happy with that okay I'm gonna go into the top now I'm gonna felt everything down that we've put in I'm happy with these clouds that we put in so because I'm happy I just want to bring them push it all in so obviously you're going to be a bit longer than I am because you've got the one needle I said that you could put them both together if you wanted to in part one so you could be doing this for example I'm not actually using this one because it's really noisy but we have got these ones I've actually just bought some of these for the website but I've bought these ones these clover ones because they are the best you know I've got this one which I found very finds very good but these ones have been um, I've got excellent reviews on them I saw some cheaper ones on Amazon but they said that that didn't close properly or it kept locking and I just thought it's worth buying the ones which are better quality which I'm sure you as my customers would 
would appreciate. I've also bought these. So you've got the same ones I've got. This is a clover one here. Be on my website as well. So you can put one, two or three needles in these. Okay. On another video I will show you how all of them work. We're doing the sky. We're just going over everything. We want everything to be really felted in. If you're not happy, remember I talk about this all the time. Say you don't like that cloud. I'm, look, I've just felted that in. But if I really, really don't like it, I can take it off. No, I really did like it, so I am going to put it back on again. But I just wanted to show you that actually nothing is permanent with felting and you are able to take things off. Okay, so please experiment. Look at it. If you're not happy, take it off and put it back on again. Okay. Oops, got the he Heather got stuck behind last time, didn't she? Naughty Heather. Right, okay. You will come to a point with this where you just think, actually, that's fine. So I like to give it a bit of a rub as well. And that get rid of, obviously we've got the needle marks in there. Next, we're gonna go on to hill. I'm expecting sun number one to ret return home any minute so I might have to put the camera on pause again to go and see him. He's been hard at college today. He goes to an engineering college near us called Seamast and he's doing really well. As I explained um, before in my other video both of my son have got autism and my first son has struggled quite a lot within an education environment. He's been fully supported all the way through with one-to-ones because he's got ADHD as well. Um, and it was really great when I took him to Seamast College because for the first time ever they offered me a one-to-one. -one. Instead of me having to fight for one. So that was that was a real revelation to me. Anyway, so but he's doing extremely well. I'm so proud of him. How well he's getting on and managing. Okay, so as I'm fountain that in, that bit there, can you see, is just starting to show through the bottom. Because obviously as you're as you're felting, it's growing tighter and tighter. And so it kind of pulls the wool off as it has done there. So I've got plenty of green. So I'm just going to go in with a bit of green, like that bit there. I'm just going to stick it over the top. It's like a little plaster. You can see the difference between that and now this stuff. So that needs to be felted in just as much as everything else we've done. I don't want to make this flat. So I'm not going to go in hammer and tongs on the top of this because it will push it in to the wool. And I obviously don't want to do that, okay? Because I've kind of made it proud. So standing up a bit because I'm going to put this into a box frame as I've explained. You don't have to put your pieces into box frames. I've got my pieces shown in many different ways. Some even haven't even got any glass on them. I've just decided to put um, put them in a frame without the glass because I wanted them to stand up. So I'm just going to go in from the side and from the other side. Okay. So we've got this really beautiful piece here. Remember we were just pulling it out bringing it down, we were using our finger to be able to shape things. I'm going to go around onto the sand now. Now, so there is something else we could do here. We could put in some seaweed, which I have done in 
other ones I've done. But I don't know, I just love that white so much. I really like the you know the real glossiness of this um of this silk that's in there. So personally on this particular piece I'm not going to put the seaweed on. But I'm very happy to show you how you can do it. We could use a bit of your green because obviously a lot of seaweed is green and I would absolutely make sure that you're using little bits at a time okay because look as soon as you put that green on oh, I'm gonna use a fine needle especially when you're going on to white it's quite bright isn't it so little bits at a time I would advise okay so once again make them all different shapes don't make it straight use your finger again if you want to kind of push it up so there that is what you can do with some seaweed so you've got all different kinds of green here left because um, you wouldn't have used all of your greens I've just noticed there's another bit there coming apart I'm just going to put this actually that bit in there I'm going to go up there into that bit and down this is what I love doing with it I just love making different shapes can you see what I did there right so that's how you would do the seaweed and you would kind of put it along here like that we have got this sort of only green for seaweed as well so there we are with our lovely sand oh, my favorite bit let's get to the waves let's pull it off again move it up as i discussed with the wool that you're going to be receiving within your pack um, you'll have all different colors within it um, as you can see we've got some angelina fibers here which are kind of putting some red and pinky colors in we've got some nice aqua blue we've got some white we've got all different colors and we've also got more left now what i've done here as we discussed was to build that up this is what i'm going to do for this particular piece because i'm going to put it into a box frame if however you weren't going to put it into a box frame i would make everything flat okay so that you wouldn't have that and the c you would make flat but you can still make your highlights with the blue that you've got left so what remember when we did this i got chatting and i um in part one and i made the c too straight do you remember so then we went back in again and made it curve around so all the time i'm doing this i'm aware that there's a curve okay so i'm just showing you what to do if you're going to put this in into a frame sorry with glass straight on the top just showing you what you're able to do because it will obviously the glass will go straight on to the piece of wool all right so all we've got left now is our blue locks and our white lock I am still making shapes with this so instead of going directly on the top okay I'm just going in around the sides to make a shape with this so don't forget waves obviously come and go and are all in different wave patterns So I'm just going to get a bit of glass. Obviously this glass is too big. 
I just want to show you so that is that hill and that is your C shape we've done there if you're putting it if you're putting this picture in with a mount as well don't forget the mount will lift the glass off the piece as well so that will give you a bit of space yeah that's a great lovely thing about a mount I mean as soon as you put the mount on it's just like oh wow but the glass there you are there you are with the glass okay if I've got a frame which is a box frame the glass will sit proud like this so you would have that 3d feature with the bush so with a the mount there you are you're able to have some detail but the glass is on the top if you don't have a mount the glass will sit directly on top and as you can see it pushes down on there which is completely fine so all three ways are completely fine it, it just depends on how you would like to show your piece at the end okay so for my waves because I'm using the box I'm going to bring them out now the way I do this is I literally pull them out and then I'm going to use my finger as we've talked about before and I'm kind of pushing in the right hand side of the wall so along this bit here and I'm not felting this side down so that side this side here will stay up so here we are I'm pulling it up I'm pulling it up and I'm pushing in the side nearest to the sand Now, I'm going to push that bit in. Sorry, that's my son come home from college. You can hear him above me. Right, so I've, I've pushed that bit in there to make that bit stick up. That bit go in. This bit stick up. This bit go in. And this bit stick up and there you are okay and what I'm doing is literally making wave shapes so when you look at the piece can you see there so there's some bits I've attached on both sides and there's others where I've left it sticking up okay push that in either side of it once again make that more accented be very careful when you're using this tool there's one wave I'm going to make a wave down here so we don't have to wait one continuous line of waves and we can have them coming in as long as they're pushing towards the sand that's what we want they need to be going this way okay I'm going to carry on making these waves just had a cup of tea and a mince pie must all have a break sometimes I think that's the important thing with any craft you do actually is that you make time to have a break as well because we can be sat in one position for quite a long time I'm not saying we should always have a mince pie with it but hey ho wasn't going to say no okay so you can see what I'm doing I'm coming in from the side which is nearest to the sand coming in like this and then I'm going to just attach the two sides 
going to pick out, oh let's have a bit of that colour this time. So we've got a bit of darkier blue. I don't want it quite that thick though. If you can hear that running water, I've just put my radiators on, so I do apologise. Right, here we are. So with this piece, we've got two ends to it, remember. So and they're both, and look, that looks like a wave already when I've pulled it off. We're going to anchor it, if you like, if you want to call it anchor. I'm going to anchor it at one end. like this. I'm going to go round it. So I'm pulling it out, putting my finger underneath because I don't want to attach that bit. And then I'm going to anchor it in the other side. So the main reason I'm doing it like this is because I'm going to use the frame, which is a box frame. Okay. So you can see here that is standing up. Can you see that? So I can lift that up and put my finger in it. There. This one's, you don't want all the waves to be the same. So they're all different shapes and sizes, which is what the C is, isn't it? Okay, so I'm looking at this though, and that kind of goes like that, and that goes like that. So I'm just going to take that side off and push it there. So that that's more of it. That's fine. So we've got two waves next to each other there. Coming in on the side edge there, nearest the sand, I remember I said. Okay, so I'm attaching that down. still don't like the shape of that so I'm going to just put that so I want that still making that shape there it's just a bit too straight for me there so once again I'm going to go back in I'm going to use my multi-tool for a sec just make sure I'm going in the right place okay so I'm attaching that edge there we are. Now we've got this beautiful lock. We can attach it at the side here. I'm just going to use my multi tool just for quickness, just to attach that in. Okay, and then I can bring that all the way over and go that side. All right. So you can imagine that a set of crashing waves coming in. Now. If you weren't using a box frame, as we've discussed, I'm just going to show you. So that, I mean, you can almost hear that, can't you, come crashing in. I love it. It's lovely. Okay, so that's one way of doing it. Oh, don't forget we've got these lovely locks as well. So these ones could go up as the, as the wave is crashing, you know, it kind of spits up a bit of water, doesn't it? So these, we can go in with these other color locks and just go in behind it as like the splashing water. So we put all our locks together if you like. So that's one way of putting your locks on. So that's what it would look like. So if we were in a frame, which was a boxed frame, and the glass wasn't right next to the wall, that would that will stay like that. Okay. If we put a the mount on, 
which I've got there. And I put some glass on the top. That will push down. Okay, but saying that, I mean, I'm just going to stand up and look at it. It doesn't look wrong, but what you might want to do is felt that in so you could shape that a bit more. For example, I'm just trying, trying to show you all different ways you, because obviously you're going to finish your work off in all different ways. So I would push this in and make that look slightly different if I was going to have glass on it. Yeah, so that you didn't have that coming in like that, which kind of looked a bit ugly. So look, that's it with a mount on. So you can see that the glass is held away from the work a bit more. This is it if you choose a frame with glass on. There's the glass. And that pushes that all down, okay? But there are three ways of being able to finish your piece of work. I think you'll agree. Each one of them has their own merits. The reason why I like to put glass on is because wool does attract moths, okay? So at least behind the glass, you're not going to get that. I think with the wave situation, I'm very happy with the way they've gone. You can see that was quite quick to put on. Some of you have got different kinds of locks. So you would just pull them out and use them as they are, or you could just put them onto the edge as well. You could certainly thin out the lock and that just means pulling it apart, pulling it apart like we've done with everything else. For me, for this particular piece, I've decided to have it crashing in with that lovely aqua blue right behind it. I'm just going to put the mount on. So I'm looking around the side, so I'm thinking actually that's not quite as finished off, so I'm going to bring the mount over this side, as you can see, push it up a bit. Now I'm checking there that everything within the picture is covered with wool, which it is now, okay? I'm gonna stand up and look at it, because I like to stand up. No, I'm happy with that. It's beautiful. This, I just love this sand. It really sticks out. I love all the work we've done here with the hillside. That comes around nicely here. We've got this really nice bit here with a bit of detail coming down. We've got the lovely beautiful locks which I just wanted to keep as whole this time. This is the box frame I'm going to be using so as you can see it's given this piece of wood here lifts the glass off of the piece. We've put in some bushes here obviously these beautiful lock at the end there. So all of that has been able to be shown within a box frame. Thank you so much for joining me with this felt along video. I hope you enjoyed finishing your kit as much as I enjoyed making them. I'm really liking my pictures and how they finished up. I hope you like them too. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you next time.